Hey, yo, this is Rocky. I'm here to introduce my, my good brothers. This is Alex. Oh, hey, Rock. And uh, this is Mike over there. Hey, say hey, Mike. Rock, I'm going to make you crap thunder. Mike, where'd you get here? <laughs> it's Adrian. Adrian. How's it going, everyone? Alex, as Rocky introduced me, and that is Mike. We are the good brothers, and we have a lot to talk about today. Yes, and can we, uh, before we get into the tags and everything, uh, why don't we go ahead and... Alex, some sad news. It just seems like, man, the older you get and the more time passes, that sad news starts coming on, and this is this is becoming a trend. But uh, the entertainment world lost another legend, somebody who was part of that big boom over at Nickelodeon. Uh, Good brother, why don't you take it? Um, we sadly lost creator of SpongeBob SquarePants, Stephen Hillenburg. Uh, he was a big thing for Nickelodeon at the time. He kind of rushed them into the 21st century when it came to Next level. you know cartoons and stuff. And me and Mike were talking about before show. And you know, 90s babies like to think that oh, it was a Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers. I'm like, that was early 90s. We were kind of more on the reruns of that, like Rugrats, Hey Arnold, SpongeBob, like Duh, especially SpongeBob yeah, the way it lasted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was our generation. That's when we were seven, nine. Yeah, we're we're finally understanding that. I think SpongeBob was really big for us because I remember it premiering after the Teen Choice Awards. The Nick the Nick Choice Awards. Yeah, yeah. the Nick Choice Awards, and yeah. I remember them appearing like. Right after, and it was yeah. hilarious, and and it's funny because they say if you grew up with SpongeBob, you went to college with SpongeBob. Yeah, and obviously we're we're flower children here on the on the network, so you know I love SpongeBob in yeah, college. Like here. we would watch it on the bus from competitions, and everyone can quote SpongeBob early SpongeBob. You know, like Krusty Krab Pizza is, is the, the pizza, pizza for you and me. So like yeah. he just created this character that was almost like. Ahead of its time, kind of like it's just so random, so funny. Patrick Star. But if you Sandy. look at if you look at the cartoons and the animation and the comedy that is right now, a lot of it can be traced back to that era of cartoons. Because look yeah. at uh, Adventure Time, Gumball, um, Steven, Universe. Steven Universe. It's all very much in that type that of niche. Yeah, that, that clever. Almost millennial humor. Yeah, like, it's very you know, much Say what that. you want about yeah. them, but there's some funny content that came out of the millennials. So, uh, ve- favorite SpongeBob episode? I like the Bubble Dome episode. Bubble Dome is very where good. they sing the song. Yeah. That it's called Band Geeks. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, One of my favorites, probably. The, the winner premiere. takes all. Uh, the premiere is great, where he's like, "SpongeBob SquarePants, reporting yeah. for duty, sir." Uh, my favorite SpongeBob moment, though, and it's one that only makes me laugh because I think about when we were kids giggling. Can I guess? Can I guess it? Because I know what it is. Yeah, it's the one with dumb Texas, <laughs> and they throw the <laughs> robot Patrick, and you just hear him yell, "No!" <laughs> That's one of my favorite episodes. I have no idea why, but as children, that used to just crack us it up. It was an adult, like and I, I can, but yeah. I can hear our childhood laugh. Yeah, in that in that episode. So like that, that to me, is I like the movie. The movie was great. The first one, movie was really funny. Actually, like it was again one of those beside Rugrats, one of those very successful Nickelodeon movies. And now they made a sequel, and they have another one coming out. Yeah. So three motion pictures, like it is safe to say, Nickelodeon's biggest success. Ever. I agree, and I like. I know a lot of people are going to defend Rugrats. Love Rugrats. That's my favorite. Rugrats one. Rugrats could be the, your favorite, and maybe even more critical, better one. Yeah. But no, SpongeBob the carries Nickelodeon. Yeah. yeah totally. And everyone knows that. Like SpongeBob is why Nickelodeon is still Nickelodeon to this day. Now, do you ever think will Nickelodeon will ever have that type of success that it ever had with SpongeBob again? It had a very underground um, one with with uh, not, uh Naruto and what was the other one? Uh, Airbender. Yeah, but even those, it's just a different. It's it came out at the right time. Sure, the cable was still big. Sure. Nowadays, you have all these sh- better shows on Netflix. Disney's Hulu. gonna have its thing. Yeah. Uh, Disney Playhouse has a. Re- I mean, honestly, right now Disney has one of the better daytime programs. YouTube has taken a lot of that niche with like Baby Shark is one of the biggest yeah, things out there. Yeah, like, so, like I YouTube get it. has all these shows, so I just think it's there's too much content now. Yeah, that you're not going to see another 18 year SpongeBob because even look at something that's good as Steven Universe Adventure Time, it was great seven seasons. We're not going to see a 20-season show. It's almost like The Simpsons. Sure. It caught on right as like that Simpson caught on where you're like, they can go to 40 years and no one's going to say really Because it's it. the OG. It's, like, they're yeah, just, it's they've been around so long. Like, it's like Family Guy at this point, too. Like They're, they're 18 seasons or 20-some seasons because it's fine. Well, it's still I, getting the views. Him and uh, Dan Harmon. Who created all the the, the fairy parents, parents and things uh, like that? Danny Phantom. Yeah, like they they really are staples and and kind of the backbone that was the for a fairy, long time. Like I think SpongeBob's still one of those only ones from the '90s still around because they got rid of they just ended the fairy parents I think two years ago. Yeah, 
Danny Phantom never got revived. Invader Zim was supposed to, and they still haven't done it, so that's been pushed back a lot. That's one that like really hurt the Rocko, heart. Rocco, Rocco's yeah. still supposed to be coming out at the end of this year, but I think they're gonna push that one too. Probably. Like, so you got to think like because well, Viacom sold out, yeah, and there's a lot of weird they started the yeah. Ninja Turtles show. So Nickelodeon's kind of in a weird spot. So is Disney. So is Cartoon Network. Honestly, like Cartoon Network's kind of the top dog again because of Adventure Time, Steven, yeah. Teen Titans. They just got their big motion picture movie. Well, again. And, and if you look at it, like I, I'm so fascinated. With We'll, we'll, we'll get into the whole episode in just a little bit, but I'm fascinated by the way uh, programming is blocked now. Because if you watch the way they program Cartoon Network, it's very much attention span things where it's like, here's five minutes of your cartoon, yeah. and here's 40 minutes of commercials. Two, like, two 15 minute slices. It's very interesting how they how they very much do that. I think because they have Adult Swim, they're very adult oriented too. Because, like, I like Teen Titans Go. I think it's yeah. funny because yeah, there's a lot of adult humor in there, yeah. there's a lot of. There's a lot of references that for young kids, like Kaylee watches it, yeah. our baby cousin, and she watches it and she thinks it's funny. I think it's funny because of the inside jokes, yeah, yeah. the little jabs or the little like, we're playing Oregon Trail. I'm like, these kids don't know what Oregon Trail is, but, but Alex, it's funny. What do parents say all the time? So you're just talking about when you're hanging out with with your little co- with our little cousin, like it's one of those things where the for the for the adult, there's jokes for you. For yeah. the child, there's jokes for you. Like especially it, it's, at that age where you, I think Cartoon Network does the best of like you know I can the, leave the sign. And you know who did that better than almost anybody? SpongeBob SquarePants. It was then that was Nickelodeon in the nineties where yeah. you're like, I can leave Rugrats on and I like the Rugrats. Yeah. The Wild Thornberries. I like Hey Arnold. Especially Hey Arnold. Like that yeah. was super, that was actually a Doug, more thought at this uh, point. Yeah, same with Doug. Ah, uh, real monsters, Angry Beavers. I mean, Angry yeah. Beavers to us is like one of those instant classics. Yeah, too, exactly. So. Norbert. But uh, again, shout out SpongeBob will always be part of the lexicon as well as uh as, seven man. Yeah, that's uh, New Garrick's disease. What is it? ALS? ALS. Yeah, yeah man. It's kind of crazy that they still really don't have anything to solve that nowadays. No. So So that was that's not a fun way, but yeah, Hillenberg, man. So shout I'm out Hillenberg. Legend. Yeah. Oh, God. Number love, send it up. Stanley, damn, dude. Yeah, yeah. thank Big you. Big creator, base creator, SpongeBob creator of Spider Man, damn. So, shout out to him, nothing but Link. love. Uh, thank you for the great memories and uh, for the legacy that will be forever known. I mean, yeah, good dude, stuff. Like, you, you, good you, stuff. You're Nickelodeon, bro. Yeah, you're you, the, you're, yeah. you're gonna be Nickelodeon forever. So that's kind of good. I'm short though, but damn, yeah, it. that's kind of good yeah. though, man. Like, yeah. that's really yeah. the face of it. All right, well. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that at the opera, I get to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwintipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Get ready, get set, for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe, it's The Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves, with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. Guys, thank you for coming back into another episode of The Good Brothers. We are, we're having ourselves a fun time. Some starting off with some sad news, but Alex, it's time for us to fight. Before we do that, bum, bum, I want to make sure bum, 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 bum. that I want to give Alex some credit. We made a bet on last week's show that we will be uh, a little tease. We'll talk about in just a little bit, but we made a bet last week that you can check out in the archives that uh, Creed Two and Wreck It Ralph Two 
both sequels coming out this past Thanksgiving weekend. We uh, we actually get about to do a full review of Creed 2. We are going to do a full review of Wreck It Ralph and uh, Widows, along with some of the other Oscar winners over the next couple of weeks. We promise you guys that while you get ready for vacation mode this Christmas season, this holiday season. So, uh, Alex, congratulations. You picked right. Wreck It Ralph was the number one movie this holiday season. Pretty close in the sense of, you know, both movies making a lot of money. But uh, if we were looking as if this was a race at the end of the at the end at the very beginning at the very least, but towards the end, Wreck It Ralph definitely ran away with it. Um, yeah, uh, what do, what do you think? Did you were you surprised a little bit, or did you? I mean, you picked it this way, but did you think it would be closer, or did you think this margin would be as big as it was? I mean, dude, I hate to always be right. Oh, here we go. Yeah. But I, I told Mike, and I, now I, spoiler: alert, I didn't like Creed at all. I think it's actually more of a bad all right, movie. All right, movie. we'll get to that in a second. But get to you, yeah. I told him, and I'm like, Mike, this isn't personal. I'm like, Wreck It Ralph's gonna make money. He's like, you're crazy. I'm like, no, dude, you're just high off of Creed. I thought Wreck It Ralph was gonna make a lot of money. I thought Creed would make money. And I was like, I was like, dude, a lot. Of, and you're not the norm. There was a lot of people that thought that. I'm like, you're dumb. Not because you like the movie, but because it's an animated movie in November. That is, that's their spot, dude. So okay, and it made almost, and we want, and it deserves it. It, it deserves made, it. 20 more million yeah, than it yeah. did, dude. That's a, that's a big jump. It's a big jump because you know what? Yeah. It looked like a better movie through previous two. I mean, it probably is a better movie. Record Ralph made 80 million and Creed made 55. Now, Creed, all, but here's some of the Creed. Record Ralph is the second highest grossing anime movie in November after Frozen. I want, I'm glad you're getting Creed 2 has now passed, guess what? Four Christmases. That's so crazy. Yeah, but it, makes sense. it makes sense. It makes sense in November. The number one live action movie in November. And it deserves so, it too. So, very proud. Like, yeah. like solid good money. Yeah. I like I said, you're not beating an animated movie. Right. Like that's so, just a bigger audience. So uh, we'll definitely be watching Wreck It Ralph 2, though, so we can give you our review of it over the next few weeks. It's perfect. Yeah, we're, we'll be excited about that. So now, before we get into full spoilers, why don't we go ahead and uh, give a quick general review? I'll ask you a question, you give me a quick answer, and then you'll give me the score, yeah. okay? So in a quick answer, did you like Creed 2? No. Out of 10 rounds, how many rounds would you get? It went up from when I stopped the movie. I had it at a 6 when I started. I'll give it a 6.5 now. Purely for the Dolph Lundgren character and his story. But it's still not a good movie. And it's still one of the weaker Rocky movies. In my opinion, it's the second worst Rocky movie. Okay. In my opinion. And uh, for me, I will say I loved it. I give it... 7.3 out of 10 rounds. So 7.5, we can round it up. Oh, right. If I'm rounding it up, it'd be about 7.5. Solid. Very yeah, solid. a very solid movie. It's good. So, um, yeah, that is our our spoiler-free review. Alex gives it? 6.5. I give it 7.5, and uh, he does. Would you recommend it? In the theaters? Yes. No, there's a lot out there. Go watch Widows of Wreck-It Ralph. Would you recommend it? Just watching in general? Yeah. Now, not would in, you just recommend it in general? Now, not in theaters. Yes, if oh. you don't, don't pay for it. Oh, don't pay for it. Okay, go, so go it, rent it. Okay, so if it's on Netflix, streaming. rent it. Order for three ninety nine on the on okay. the on the TV. Okay, but there's a lot. Better you could stay at that. You could stay gonna, home that night. And yeah, watch you can it stay home, home that night. Watch Rick and Ralph. Watch okay. Widows. Watch uh, okay. Overlord. Okay, cool. Uh, I recommend watching it. I think I think it's worth the watch. It's worth a couple bucks the night out. So uh, that's our thoughts right here now. Five dollar Tuesdays. Sure, Maybe a five dollar Tuesday. Fair enough. All right, it's you and a friend. So why don't we go ahead, guys? Uh, if you want to stick around for the spoilers, I mean, there's not really much to spoil in this movie, but if you want to stick around for spoilers, we're going to start in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We are in the spoiler rounds right of now. Cree right 2 now. right now. Right now. Um, nobody dies, so Rocky's still alive. So lame. So I, a lot of people thought this would be the movie that we that uh, Sylvester Stallone leaves. So this is where I want to get into, Alex. You and I, this is one of the rare first times that we not only disagree on a movie, I think we've disagreed on a few ones, but this is when we very adamantly left the movie theater disagree. I think here's how we describe it. So in Justice League, we disagreed, but it was more of like a Alex likes it because it's stupid, and Mike thought it was very average because it was stupid. But they both think, we both acknowledge it was dumb, but I liked it for fun. He liked it. It was very close. We were within a half a grade. This is a movie where we are on the complete opposite end. Yeah. I think it is bad movie. Mike thinks it's a very good movie. Like, there's no movie. middle. Yeah. There's no argument. Like, if I mention the writing, he thinks it's clever. I think it's very lazy. He likes Sylvester Stallone. I think he was pointless to the movie. Yeah. He thought they did a good job with Tessa Thompson. My Jordan. I thought they did a terrible job and wasted them. So why don't we get into it? I mean, with, yeah, without doing the challenge. We're like almost opposite on every single thing except for one thing. Let's talk about the one thing we agree on. It's got a great protagonist in this movie. Yeah, I, I, it's not just one, but it's got two it uh, really great. good protagonists. Yeah, they uh, were amazing. 
That dude is my new man crush Monday. So obviously, Dolph Lundgren as Ivan Drago yeah. and uh, Florian Mantua as uh, Victor Drago. I think I'm saying that right. Victor, uh, the guy who plays Victor Drago, Florian, he's actually a uh, kickboxer. Yeah, there you go. You know and, that. And uh, yeah. uh, actually, it was funny is the original guy, you guys can look him up, Sage Northcutt. He uh, is a uh, used to fight for the UFC. Now he's a free agent, but he was in talks for the role. And much smaller dude. Uh, he's I believe a featherweight or a lightweight. So he's uh, about one fifty five in real life. So he probably walks around about one seventy five. Uh, this guy Florian is not walking around at one seventy five. He's he's a, a he's a brick house. Um, so this is what uh, I this is what I liked about the movie very much. So is. It it felt like closure to the Drago story. It felt like almost every movie before it, before the Rocky movies. Like Creed had Rocky one and Rocky two had a Creed saga that ended. Rocky three was pretty much ended with with Mr. T. Like that wasn't that ended pretty definitively. Dr- Part four kind of had an, an ambiguous ending because like you saw the country kind of turn its back on Drago. He it, it, it panned on him a little bit. Like it was just a different feeling to that movie. And then the way Rocky five came around and all that. Kind of ruined it, yeah. So it kind of coming back felt very much natural because my biggest concern is like, all right, this is what I told you when we left the movie. I'm like, they're selling you on this is Drago versus Creed. So it's like they already told you so far that this is going to be a popcorn film. They didn't they didn't hide this as an Oscar bait movie like they did Creed 1. They didn't promote it to be a, a Oscar vo- uh, vessel for Michael B. Jordan or Sylvester Stallone. But what this one did was say, we're going to give you a good movie, but we also know the outlandishes are what are the chances that Creed's son is going to meet Drago's son. Like, it is an outlandish I mean, idea. Improbable. But the way they do it is, if this was going to happen, like, yeah, the, the Ukraine is struggling right now. A, a Russian boxer that disappointed his country would be down in the dumps. You would be hard ridden like that. And here's the one thing I appreciate about Michael B. Jordan in this movie is there's a lot of raw emotion that he brings out to it. There's a lot of Michael B. Jordan could be an actor that could always just phone it in and his natural charisma could carry carry most things. I think in this one, you could tell that he put physically he put himself into it, which comes off in screen because if he put so much work in the gym, he put it on screen. My, I will say my biggest complaint is Rocky is very sporadic throughout the movie, but I came out realizing that especially over time, it's not Rocky anymore. It's Creed. This is Creed now. We love Rocky. We are a part of the generation that could quote him all day. We put them on Vines, on YouTube, use them as inspirational videos. Everybody loves Sylvester Stallone. It's not Rocky. It's Creed. It's not Sylvester Stallone in Creed. It's Michael B. Jordan is Creed. This is his vessel now, and you're seeing in this movie because he highlights that. Tessa Thompson is a superstar. The yeah, scenes where she's just not in this movie. When, when, when they highlight her, though, when she's singing, like, she commands a presence. Whether she's think, on screen crying. I think crying, you can tell the actors miss Ryan Coogler. But there's a difference. And I, I said this. Ryan Coogler is a different level. You, there's an appreciation. You get, there's an awesome tweet out right now that the Russo brothers tweeted out with Peyton Reed, John Favreau, the Russo brothers, and Taika Waititi. Yeah. Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi. Are you, like, that's, that's uh, cream of the crop. Ryan Coogler is on that list. Yeah. Like, those are... But you know what? There's a lot of great... Scott Derrickson's a great director. Like, a lot of great directors can get onto these voyages. That doesn't mean that they're the guy before them. I mean... All right. So, that's Mike's positives. I'm going to go the complete opposite. I thought the writing was terrible. I I get your point. I just think that doesn't excuse a bad movie. Like, the Rocky stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool with that. A good writer would spread him out enough where it makes sense. It didn't make sense the way he was in it. It was almost like they weren't trying to put him in the background. They were trying to force him into scenes he didn't need to be forced in. That was my problem. Two, I think we have two Oscar-worthy actors later in their careers who not are phoning in in this movie, but you can tell they're not giving what they did in part one. I think they're not written very well. I think Michael B. Jordan does a very relapse of part one where, you know, you fall in love with this guy, and then you get part two, you're like, oh, he's an asshole again. Now I got to re-fall in love with him, and... He's trying to prove something, but he's not. But he kind of is, and he's kind of selfish. And he turns heel. At the end of the movie, I'm like, I want to see Creed 3. I want to see Drago get the title. I will he see turns that. heel at the yeah. end of it. And I feel like, I'm like, I don't want that. Like, it's not good acting. It's bad writing. I do agree with you. Michael B. Jordan's a goddamn angel. Tessa Thompson is mesmerizing. They're still not written well. Rocky, I was about to ask him, like, was he in the movie? I was like, I remember him showing up and leaving and coming back. 
that's not a good thing when he almost got an Oscar. He should have won the Oscar last year for it or two years ago. It's a very bad written movie, I think. It's very bad. And in my list, it's right. It's Rocky Five and then this. Balboa's better. Rocky, we'll get into the list it, in a second. But. It doesn't have the fun. Like, you keep saying it was fun. I'm like, Raw 4 was fun because if it was just montage, 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 montage hit. This movie wasn't bad. This movie tried throwing... You know, I talked to Mark Sisko after. They're like, I didn't get the middle stuff. They're like, the marriage stuff and the baby was kind of forced. And I was like, exactly. And the other movie was kind of background. It, oh, yeah, the baby came... But we knew he was getting back to me. This one was kind of like, they're kind of emphasizing it a lot. Like, he's in the gym being angry. I'm like, why are you mad? Like, I don't get it. And then we get to the final fight, and he kicks the dude's ass, honestly. It's not, I thought the final fight choreography, it just did not do it. It was, I, there was not one round where you're like, okay, Apollo's not going to win. Or Adonis. Adonis is going to win. And I hate that. I'm like, can we not get a little more... Like, the first fight, he kills him, and now that training in Mexico really trained him that well to kick his ass? Uh, okay, so can uh, let me just put We're, we're going to do this all day, people. Yeah, Mike, your turn. All right, so when it comes to that, the problem is, and it's in every Rocky movie, He, he literally, Rocky literally goes to Russia, and all of a sudden, because he carried rocks and ran in ice in boots and a leather jacket, he's able to beat a steroid... Uh, a steroid Russian. But he hadn't and, fought him in the beginning of the movie and lost. Well, uh, uh, Apollo got killed by him. I'll so we saw him in the ring. That's fine, but he already beat Apollo. He's better than Apollo. I'll give the movie this. It was the most clever way to end the first fight to get me to the oh, final phenomenal. fight. phenomenal. Because the whole time, me and Mike are probably thinking, if he just loses this fight, it's going to be fucking stupid. Yeah. The fact that he gets disqualified, that Drago does, I was like, you know what, movie? Now, I will say this. Applaud you. That's clever because I did not see that getting us to the next fight, but uh, there's, you got us There's there. two positives I want to get into. Only two for the movie, honestly. Well, no, there's two more I want to get into. One, I think the fight choreography was phenomenal. Even the last one? Yeah, I think all of it was great. Okay. As a Rocky fan, I loved it. And as a fan of the sweet science that is boxing and everything that is MMA, obviously uh, Ty- Tyron um, – Tyrion, whatever it's, I'm sorry to say, name Game of Thrones characters. Say drag. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Florian, uh, he's a real fighter, so he knows how to look good. He knows how to throw punches, how to take oh, punches. No, I'm not talking about the punches. Uh, no, I'm talking about the, the, the Adonis scene. got a little yeah. too much offense for a final fight. Yeah, there was never a moment where you felt nervous that he was going to lose. You knew he was going to win from round one, and I don't like that because then the other rounds are pointless to me. Okay, but I always knew Rocky was going to beat Creed, uh, was going to beat uh, uh, according to Clubber Lang, maybe Clubber Lang after number one, after he lost him to the first time. I knew he was going to beat Drago after he killed uh, uh, Apollo. I don't know. It could have been. Like, he was always, in Russia. He could have got screwed. Look like, at that He won more than he lost, Alex. Like the point is, is like that's it was very people are like you're so mad about the formula that is the Rocky series. Oh, I'm not. I'm mad that it didn't do it enough. If you're going to do one of that, because Balboa was. It's like, hey, we're gonna be a well written movie, and it was a well written movie. No, no. like, I'm gonna be a okay. well written movie. This movie was like, uh, do we want to be creator? Do we want to be Rocky Four? Hold on, we don't have either. No, I now I have an issue <laughs> with this because while we, you and I enjoy Rocky Balboa, Rocky Balboa, as time has gone on, is very much more disliked and disliked. And disliked. I disagree. I think I it's getting agree. up on the no, list. It's not. It's, oh it's, man, it, we're just not It's like no, I think no, that movie's gone up no, on people's no, it's, list. It, there's a lot of there's a lot of articles that have recently by from Collider from GameSpot. There's a oh, lot no. of articles that have come out that have been talking about. Especially since Creed and Creed Two have come out, that this like for for, for Rocky it. for Rocky Balboa, and while I may love it, Rocky Balboa had the problem of it didn't know what it wanted to, whether it wanted to be a very serious movie or if it wanted to be a Rocky movie. I mean, he has a montage, fight. but then it's HBO boxing. It was like it was very much like two different things. This one, at the very least, my biggest complaint about the movie it was badly written. No, and stop putting words in my mouth. My biggest problem with the movie is I didn't like Max Kellerman who I love as a true professional broadcaster, he's an amazing HBO announcer, he's one of the best to ever do it, was so much like an EA uh, EA uh, knockouts, where yeah. it's like, Club uh, uh, Adonis yeah. with a big uppercut. It didn't bother me. There was so much going on that, I guess. But that's something that you would notice more because you're a fighting guy. I, it, it yeah, no, I get that. You nuts. told me that too. I was like, I don't see it, but I'm not a fighting guy. It drove if me I nuts. saw something that you're related and it looks stupid, like I'd probably say it. Let's be honest, Mike. Like It's opinion. It's movie. We're gonna we're gonna, I want to rate I it. have seven articles saying Rocky Bell is great. You have seven saying it's bad. I got critics saying Creed was not what it lived up to be. I'm, when it Let's comes to that, them. I'm more in the... Minority, I'd say. I think it's more of a 70-30. Sure. Not even a 64, not even 50-50. 70-30. Like, 70% of people like it. That's why it's an 82 on Rotten Tomatoes. That's a great score, by the way. Yeah. I just personally don't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't have fun with it. 
I, well, five I did. dollar movie. Was my great had fun with was it. And that's movies. movies. Yeah, like literally the great things. And like I think it's fun because we haven't had a real. We haven't been able to disagree on a movie in a very long time like this. And well, you know what? I promise you guys, we'll disagree about more as the mo- the weeks and months come by. But we got to move Aquaman's on. This will, I mean, yeah. speaking of that, like we'll get into that in just a little sec. But before we get into uh, future movies, let's go ahead and rank them. Uh, we we talked about it a little bit. Um, so we could do a universal one. So. Will we put Rocky at one? Oh, we can't do it. All right, so let's we'll, we'll split off once we get there. Rocky one. Yes. What would be two? Creed. Okay, I agree. So Rocky one and Creed. Yes. What would be three? Personally, for me. Yes. Rocky four. I would put Rocky three. Okay, so we're the, okay. Yeah, so I got Rocky three at three. You got Rocky four at three. I got Rocky four at four. I'd put Rocky two and then Rocky three. I'd put Rocky two. Actually, no. I'd put Balboa, then three and four. I'd put Balboa and, and then two. Because Balboa is one of my top four. Okay, so, so go I, ahead and give your Rocky, list out. Rocky, Creed, Rocky four, Balboa, two, three, Creed two, Rocky five. All right. I would go Rocky, Creed. Good. Rocky three. Respectable. Uh, Rocky, f- uh, Rocky. Four. Yeah, Rocky four, Creed two, Rocky Balboa, uh, Rocky five. Where's Rocky two? Did I miss Rocky two? Oh, Rocky two? two, probably in between then. Uh, Creed two and uh, and so Rocky Balboa. Creed two? Yeah, above no above uh, Rocky Balboa. So Creed's what like third from the bottom, honestly. Uh, yeah, but it's only eight movies. No, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I didn't think it was that. Like, I, oh, it's to only to be eight honest, dude. Like, you're one movie ahead of mine. Like no, it's, that's yeah. really not that different. Like I love I the Rocky series. We though. argued all this, and to be honest, I had Rocky five and Creed two. Mike had Rocky five, one other movie, and Creed like. Yeah. That, it's a lot of series. I think that goes to my point that it's not even up top four. But but then you're talking about some of the most iconic movies ever made. Uh, once you get to Rocky, Creed, I Rocky Four, break, and Rocky Three, yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, of course. It's Have a- you seen the college humor of the real sports thing? The real thirty for thirty no, about I it. It has Max Kellerman on it too. Okay, it's it hilarious. Yeah. And they talk about like if it really happened. Yeah. They do that one. They do Angels in the Outfield All right, and Air Bud. It's know. hilarious. All college right. humor five minute videos. They're hilarious. All right. So that's our thoughts of Creed 2. Check it out. Uh, let us know what you guys think about it. And we'll have our review of Wreck-It Ralph and all the other fun stuff in the coming up weeks. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the operator to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwintipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. But Alex, there's even more news that we need to um, talk about. We got three little tidbits here. I'll, uh, I'll save the last one for you, Mike. Yeah. Um, we got an announcement that Spider-Man Into Spider-Verse is already going to get a spinoff movie. Uh, it's called Spider-Woman, so that's pretty much Gwen Stacy, and I think we're going to get a few more. Um, that's great. That means the movie's getting hype reviews already. It looks great. I can't wait to see it. Aquaman early reviews came out. This is the earliest uh, DC movie has gone out of embargo for so the most we, part. Can we, before we move on, we're going to take a few minutes from the podcast. So if you don't want to talk about anything that is Aquaman, oh, you, you, could get out of, yeah. you, could, you could go ahead and, and, and move forward. I know some people are very yeah, excited no, about you're this right. Movie. You have to do it. Yeah. So, but we're going to go ahead and talk about some Aquaman stuff right now. We're both super excited about this movie. I've been, I think on the network, I've been the most cautious about it because I've been hurt so nah, much by I've DC. I've been so hyped. But He's a bro. Alex, it sounds like it's going to be special. Yeah, it is some very good reviews. I think out of 
the 11 I've read, there was one sentence of bad, and they even they turned around saying, no, but it makes it fun. Yeah. And they're saying, some people are saying this is the best DCU movie. Some people are saying second best. I think that's the majority saying Wonder Woman than this. No. Some people are saying, I like this one quote. They said, this is the best Marvel movie DC's ever made. Now, I wonder, it's fun. I, it's exciting. I wanted to get into that because when I think of James Wan and I think of Jason Momoa, I think right away of like Chris Pratt and James Gunn. Yeah. Or like Kugler and uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman. I Holzman. think we're going to get a lot of Thor Ragnarok. This is going to be one of those yeah. movies where it's like, yeah, that movie's good. It's fun. And it looks amazing. That's the one I keep going to is I'm like, there's one of the reviews you hear. You're like, okay, so uh, that's kind of the vibe now, I'm getting. I have. I want to give a quick shout out for anybody who's part of our little uh, key kingdom here it, to uh, the Weekly Hero with Robert Meyer Burnett and John Campia. They mentioned, they brought this up and it, it's what triggered this thought of, you know, I'm a big, big complainer about one thing, pop culture. I don't like to complain about pop culture stuff because we're spoiled and we're, we're blessed for a lot of these cool things. I think it's inexcusable when we don't have a Batman film at least every once every three years on the TV, on the film screen right now. When it's at, when superheroes are at the peak of its, of its thing, the fact that Batman is never on, hasn't been on screen we forever so now. Much. I get it. I get it. But that's just my personal feeling. He's my favorite. That's what I want. It's like Spider-Man. The fact that we didn't have Spider-Man forever because of these uh, uh, Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man 2, and because of what uh, Spider-Man 3 did, like, that was a bummer for me because we did not have Spider-Man for five years. It's like, that was Spider-Man. Like, we but should it, have him. <laughs> it was worth it when the first one came out. I get that. But... When, when we hear that you know they they weren't going to come out with the movie for a year in between things, and it's kind of worked this way where like it's a fever pitch. People are excited to now see a DC movie again. People are legit, ex- and that no, wouldn't yeah. be the case six months ago. No, and I think it's gonna. And they're doing these specials like with the Amazon and even Bumblebee, where they're releasing the movie for like one. Saturday I tried getting us. I tried getting us them, and we I, we didn't get them. Yeah, you I suck. actually tried really hard and we just didn't get them. Like it's terrible. Producer. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't get us like no, the hottest like the, ticket. And, and, everything. and there was yeah. also honestly, it was a lot of early things from like these early deals you had to buy, buy yeah. these seven things. Yeah, and whatever. We're gonna watch like normal people. Trust I me, mean, there's a lot of content we have to watch, Oscar wise, honestly, and we can enjoy it over winter break with everyone else. So I it, think it's gonna make a lot of money. They had it at 100 million. I was gonna ask you now. It's gonna make I think 150, 160. Now, we Venom just passed Wonder Woman for oh, Venom. Global, like, yeah, Who would have called that? Shout this out. guy. But does Aquaman catch Wonder Woman? Yeah. Okay. Dude, people hate women. People are assholes. Yeah, people are assholes. People right. will watch yeah. this movie despite Wonder yeah. Woman. People don't go watch Wonder Woman despite. There are some terrible people out there. Yeah. No. Okay, cool. Shout out to Jason Momoa, James Wan. James and... Wan sells yeah. overseas, yeah. dude. Yeah, he so. sells overseas. It looks good, man. Dude, how many billion dollar movies Wilson you got? And, and, and then they have Mantis. I heard Black like, Mantis. Mantis. Great. Yeah, I heard it. I, and what. What got me excited is that it looks good, they said. That yeah. it looks visually stunning. Which is what people the People are part saying it's Avatar meets this. And I'm like, that's great. Because yeah. all I was worried about is going to look stupid. And the fact that you're telling me, no, guys, it looks phenomenal. I'm like, thank you. Because it's underwater. I want it to look phenomenal. It has to. I can't wait. I'm yes. so hyped for I'm, this. I'm getting there. I've been hyped for it. I'm, it's my most anticipated movie the rest yeah. of this year, honestly. Yeah. Mary Poppins is going to suck a D, honestly. I'm very excited for Mary Poppins, too, because I love Emily <laughs> yeah, Blunt. Yeah, Aquaman going to spear her, though. Yeah, probably, but I love Emily Blunt. So. I actually want to see Bumblebee, yeah. too. Bumblebee looks okay, too. Bumblebee looks cute, which is now what that worries me. that they're not doing the embargo on that one for a while, which probably means it's going to... But it's Transformers. It'll make money overseas. Right, but we'll also see, too, because there's been a lot of talk about uh, uh, the director of that movie being the director of the new Guardians of the Galaxy. We'll see. I still so. think it's going to be James Gunn. I think he comes back. That'd be very interesting. After I all think that. they're just letting it die down. They're going to make a big thing, and they're going to bring him back. We'll see. And what are we going to do? Disney it's stuck in the teeth, though. Speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy and Disney, some rumbling right now. Nothing confirmed yet, but we wanted to tackle it now because we won't be able to talk to you guys unless this happens until the next episode of The Good Brothers. It sounds like there's a possibility, if you're listening to this on Thursday... That yesterday, on Wednesday, November 28th, Disney Marvel released the Avengers 4 trailer. If it actually happened, you'll see something from us about it. Um, We're doing an official bet on the show, so me and Mike bet $5 on the box office. And I said, let's double or nothing. I'm like, I don't think it comes out tomorrow. He does, so that's the bet right now. So $5 to double or nothing bet. Mike has Avengers trailer dropping tomorrow. I think it will not drop tomorrow. Which would be Wednesday, November 28th. <clears throat> yes. So, now, humor me. The trailer drops tomorrow. What do we see? 
Obviously, it's not going to be Man, a full trailer. You bombarded me with this because I haven't heard any rumblings about it. But... And so I showed you everything that came out. Yeah, but again, me and Mike have very different sources. Okay, but it's not different sources. It's... These are verified sources. No, this I get it. That's what I'm saying. Like, like... I really thought, um, I, you know, I, I, I do a lot of the dirt sheets when it comes to this stuff. So I've, I think it's going to be a lot because they're going back in time to New York. They're going to take the. In- See, I don't want to take mine because I already kind of read mine online, and I do think it's true, like the okay. spoiler of the trailer. Okay. So I'm going to restrain. I think it's going to be epic. I'm okay. going to say the epic first one. and crazy. Okay. Yes. I, let me – you know what? I'm not going to look at your face. I think we're going to see – I. T- you know what? I'll say this. I know what we're not going to see. Well, you're not going to see. Let me see. We're not going to see Tony and Cap together. Because that is the money maker. That is no, the I shot think we get that at the end. That's the unless the Thanos unless issue. yeah, like that's the unless they're selling it for like buy tickets now. Like that's that visual is a money maker t- uh, ticket. I don't think that's the one. I think we get Captain Marvel. I think we get Tony and him. I think we get a lot because they they might as well give us. They're a lot. gonna blow it out. I don't know what the Dude. money maker is in this movie because there's so much. I don't know what's that one scene you're gonna be like. Oh, what to see what happened with like to see what happened to the main characters that does. I, yeah, yeah, if like, we get like a visual like yeah. they're in the other realm, like yeah, you and yeah. me have guessed on previous shows, like are they in another realm yeah. or are they just trapped in a stone or you now know, we have our theories. I think while we're gonna see a lot of okay, I'll tell you what I, my envision of the perfect first trailer is: we open up to Titan and we open up to Earth. And we hear Thanos talking. And it's basically talking about why he did it and so on and so forth. And we see kind of the devastation. And then we start seeing the changes that are happening. And it's not so much of an action epic, but it's much more of a, oh my god. that No, hey, we're back in this. Like This is not over. We're nowhere near the end. There's still a whole part of this story we need to see. You think you saw everything. You think you know everything. You know nothing yet. That's what I hope to see. I hope this to be a menacing, but not a threatening trailer i want this to be more of a somber like get ready you're in for a shit show type of moment because i don't need to see boss of the wall yet i know it's going to be boss of the wall this is avengers i get that what i want to see now is you ended avengers infinity war with a heartbreaker you ended ant-man and the wasp with a heartbreaker you're leading us into captain marvel which chances are is going to lead pretty heavy into something and i think that's what we're going to see now but We'll go ahead. That's what I hope to do. Before we get out of the show, I want to talk about one thing, though, Alex, about television. Can I get into it? Um, I mean, unless you want got something else you want to talk about this trailer. No, no, you're, you're making me panic because I went on the official Marvel News thing, and they're kind of addressing that it's got to be patient, which makes me, they're like, well, it's probably going to be pushed to December. I'm like, that usually means you're going to drop it. You're trying to throw us off the case, but we already know. So I think it's either tomorrow. Yeah, it could be tomorrow, guys. So we'll see. Maybe. So November. So it kind of seemed like they're trying to throw us off of that. I don't know if it's true. Could be December. Could, could be, be two more weeks. Could be. It's Disney. They're whatever they do. They you know they have us, so they can do whatever the hell they want. I, I also bet it's not tomorrow. All right. If it's Thursday, I'm gonna be real happy. So do you have any? Before we go ahead and move on, I told you in my. Do you have? Just in case it does drop and we do do something special, just something you want to lay down. Do you have anything you want to just say no, about No, I trailer? think we get a flashback. I think we get Tony and Cap meeting. I think we get Captain Marvel. Okay. Because um, we haven't had a Captain Marvel gonna, trailer we're yet. We're see all the living characters to kind of review, like, hey, here's alive. I guess we have. I don't yeah. think we get the other. Maybe we get a voice of, like, a Spider-Man or, like, a Star-Lord. Sure. Like voice, you're like, what the hell? I just said it. Like we 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 hadn't yeah. had a Captain Marvel trailer, but we have. We totally have had a Captain yeah. Marvel trailer. So like, I, it's I, time. I love it, but I want. I can't wait for the movie. But it's time though. Yeah, like yeah. it's now. It's, like we're only we're five months away. It's yeah. time for yeah, it's yeah. time. So we'll see. It's time. Um. So I want to get into TV. That's our thoughts. If, if if the trailer has dropped, you've already watched our reactions. At least uh, talk about it or post about it or we talked about it, but we wanted to just drop it now because it's kind of rumbling right now in the uh, in the nerd uh, kingdom. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the opera to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else. And how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. 
Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash MikeMercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwintipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. But before we close up shop, Alex... I want to talk about one thing about a certain show that I jumped off of that you're still watching that had something happen in this past episode that is the definition of what's wrong with the show. And oh God, what I Mike don't appreciate read, Mike read an article. It's not so much, so spoiler alert for The Walking Dead, it's not so much that uh, who they killed. It's like, why? Like, he, I, he wanted off the show. And I get it, but it's like there's... Obviously, something wrong with well, the show. Well, here's what he said exactly. Because I watched Walking Dead. I watched Talking Dead. And he yeah. was on it. He says, the problem is the writing staff last year and the producers last year were very different than this year. Sure. So the way his story, they didn't write for him a lot. So it was Jesus. He's a very well-known actor. And he basically said, he's like, listen, like Jesus is one of the best characters in the comics. Yeah. They didn't write for me. They basically hit me at Hilltop. And I stood there to do nothing. But by the time they got to this new season, he already had said, I want to be off. I, my character hasn't been set up. And they kind of agreed. They're like, I get it. We haven't set you up. Like, we have these new characters we're going with, but we can't really re. There's nothing more we can do because they, they wrote us to a corner. So he's established. He's like, it's not the writers this year. It's not the producer this year. He's like, it's what was done in the last three seasons. So that's his words exactly. They killed him off. He had a really cool fight scene. We did get our first thing of the whispers. Yeah. And when you see, I don't care who you are, when you see that walker duck the blade and stab him, I popped. I popped so but hard. I have a, like, it to me, fine. It, it's it's like in wrestling. You use, he went out on his back, and you you got over the, the next, the, the yeah. thing that's going to be part of it. I get it. You're getting over the next character. You literally just announced to us. That you're building a whole fucking universe with different movies and different characters and different TV shows and a character that everybody loved. You're telling me you could not take five minutes and be like, you know what? Let's put this one in the bullpen. We fucked up for a little while. People love him. We could do so much with this character. Let's save him for our universe. Instead, you make him a jobber to get over the next heel. Fine. Fine. I understand not everybody can survive. Not everything's like the comic no, books. No, but see, I feel survive. like you're addressing it like that when it's like, dude, imagine if tomorrow I came in and you sold the company and I'm working for a new boss. I, and he's complaining about something that happened three weeks ago. I'm like, that was a different boss. I'm like, I, I don't know it. what you I want. I know it's much more complicated. I'm talking as a fan. I know it's much more complicated. Well, I get it. Like, and I guess it's, it's – but we're not fans. We're, we're in the business. But I also – You should know better. But I could complain about the fact that it was a shitty job. Oh, for no, it Trump. sucks. And like you, just because a bad management before doesn't mean that you can't recuperate from it. You but have he talent. Wants, he chose to be right now because he thought caveat. that it was on. So it wasn't them. They would have gone with it. They and she came out. She's a beautiful lady. She came out and said, "We want us right with him," but he was over it. Yeah. And they said, "We can't blame him for being over it." No, of so all not. the best we can do is give him a real badass fight scene, which is what it is. Is I'm frustrated more where it's another. It's like in sports. It's it's you saw another great athlete go somewhere else. This guy is going to yeah. thrive somewhere else. Yeah. And while I may not be, I may not be. Into the Walking Dead like it was before. That's still a love child of mine. I love the Walking Dead. Like I, I will it's, always have love it's for still it. Still got the numbers, people. It's gonna be around but, for a while. But they dropped the ball just as much as they've ever scored a touchdown. I, and yeah, that's a real. They thing. dropped the ball. It's hard for me to blame someone. I'm not blaming anybody, but changes. they dropped the ball. That's like that's like complaining about the Bears from three years ago. Still, it's like yeah, they dropped the ball, but, but it's a whole different organization. But, Alex, but there's but there's residual effects about it. Just because it's a different regime and it happened years ago does not mean that it doesn't cause a, is a cause and effect. By you not by the past writing team not doing good by him, and by this future writing team not being able to at least be care like at least not having the aura or or having what it takes to draw him back in. Look at actors want to act; they want to make money. So if he obviously got any type of enticement or if he was interested in it, they might they maybe that weren't. They probably didn't bring him anything to the table. Like that, he might be. It might be all PR spin. Be like, I love this writing team and everything. Maybe they're just not that good. Maybe no, they're just not that good and they didn't give him anything. Because these people, like the walk. Let's be honest. Walking that cast is very open. 
Like they're like, remember there was talks about even Melissa McBride and Norman Reedus leaving until they hired the new producers and writing team. And guess what happened? They signed a huge deal. Or was it that Andrew, they had a huge and deal Andrew, and they were okay with it? I mean, it came out a year later. I'm going about what we read, dude. I'm, we're not we're not dirt sheets. We're, I'm not we being a dirt sheet. I'm talking about humans. But this is news. Yeah. They announced when these new kids came out, they wanted to sign a new contract. Andrew Lincoln was going to leave cold turkey. And he's like, I like this new thing. I'll do the movies at least. Well, to be fair, the, the rumor Michonne, was... Michonne uh, Goya, she's about to sign a contract. The, the truth was about uh, Andrew Lincoln was he was leaving the show. It never was about why or what he was doing. They never... And they never made it seem like... Here's the thing. It was so ambig- It was so ambiguous when you look back where it was like it could have been anything. Oh, he no, could have no, left the we're show or they could We're saying he was always going to leave the show for whatever reasons he had. It was honestly more professional. But the only reason he agreed to do these movies... Was because he fell in love with the writing team, and they had they were like, "Listen, he's like, it's too late to go back on me relieving, but I do want to be a part okay. of this, though." All right, now I'm going to take it back to sports. It's okay in our sports world that we could always be like, "No, that's just the GM or the agent or the athlete doing PR sp- speak because they got to work with them and they gave them a lot of money and they have obligations." I'm going to do the same exact damn thing when it comes to actors. You give the man a big contract, a primetime spot, a lot of money, he's going to be happy with whoever is in front of him. Because guess what? If he wasn't, he wouldn't have done it. Actors want to act like athletes want to ball. That's just the truth. Yeah, I, st- I think you're, very, you're, lo- you're looking in between lines that haven't been drawn yet. Maybe Perhaps. you find out Perhaps. I'm, about I'm not that. hating. I'm just saying, like, it's human nature. It's like, if they're offering you enough money, like, as an actor, you'll act. Like, that's part yeah. of the game. Like, it's part of the give and take. I, 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 like I said, and I think we're reading between from, a lot of lines. A lot of this there. is coming, and I'll be 100% honest, a lot of this just comes from the frustration of... Bitter sandwich. Yeah, because a lot of my favorite actors and characters have been killed off from the show. Was Jesus really one of your favorite characters? He, he, the actor, his character in Tom that show James, was, yeah, he's fun. Was so charming in it. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I rooted for him in it. No, I get it. Like, I mean, he was, he was, we've killed off better actors than we've kept. I, I totally agree yeah. about that. Totally, especially The Walking Dead. But I will totally admit, if you made it this far, a little bit of a bitter and sandwich. guess what? For the first time in 10 weeks, the ratings went up. Sure. It was due. They were due for an upswing. It's, always, but it's, it'll go, it's also a season finale. Yeah. Or so, a mid-season but it was, finale. But it was actually a low-rated season finale in the sense of all-time season finale. But it's also, we talked about before, television just in eight years is, is oh, it's watched a lot differently. And totally let's different. also remember what it is. There, uh, Here's another fact people tend to forget. Walking Dead numbers tend to always fall in the beginning half of the season because what comes out Sunday at 7.30? So yeah. That doesn't come out February yeah. at 7.30. Football. Football. Of course, we're watching. What was Sunday's game? Uh, this Bears. Past Sunday, no, this past Sunday was Vikings uh, uh, Packers. And the week before that was the Bears. The week before that. Okay, yeah. sorry. The week before that. Yeah. So, like, these are big games. And the week it's, before that yeah. was Dallas. And, like, yeah. Yeah, dude. Sunday Night Football. Like, I'll be honest. I flashback. Yeah. I'll have to watch Walking Dead, like, twice and through repeat just because I miss a lot of stuff. But Monday Night Football doesn't get the same numbers like it used to. And, no. w- and what's funny, though, is WWE used to hate that. Because Monday, uh, Monday Night Football will take so many of their numbers, but like nobody gets dude, numbers pe- anymore. People watch it during the app. Yeah. Like football's on your phone now. You don't need to watch. Dude, Compared to it being on network have television. Cable. You went like two years without yeah, cable. Opposed to Sunday Night Football, which is network television. I mean, NBC. dude, Netflix, all these things, they took over. Like, yeah. let's be honest. Like, viewership is a pointless number, honestly. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwindtipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado. Mercado 21 Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the operator will go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else. And how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. 
Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash MikeMercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. Yeah, no, so uh, some cool stuff. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up for this week. Did we? Oh, uh, no, man, we have a couple more things. Uh, I got yeah. announced today that the creator of the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory books, I saw the BFG, up. they yeah. signed a big deal with Netflix. Netflix, yep. Um, I watched Matilda. two things on Netflix, actually. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'm so glad you brought that up. We didn't get a chance because of the Thanksgiving Turkey Day special we did, but you went, and I'm going to do it this coming up quick, you went crazy on the binge. Um, so I did Narcos, yeah, and because it had my companion Diego Luna, Diego Luna, this is my favorite role of him. No he spoilers, plays a great yeah. bad guy. Michael Pena is beautiful, and it sets up the next season perfectly. Give it a watch; it's fantastic. It's one of Netflix's best. I think it ranked the top five Netflix shows in general. Out of stacks, out of ten stacks of a hundred dollar bills, what's it, how many? Nine. Okay. It's it's almost a perfect show. Ten episodes, real easy to get through. We'll, we'll go full review when I watch it. And what's the other one you watch? Uh, so I watched the new Coen Brothers movie. It was a bit, it was announced for the last two years. They did they took it. They were gonna release it, but then yeah. they, they they did release it actually. And they made a little bit of money. Oh, I'm sure. But they were gonna. They said, you know what, we're gonna do it on Netflix. See how this works. And it's the Ballad of Buster Duggs. Pretty excited and to see this one. So it's a it's a it's an it's what do we call it? It's six parts. An anthology. Kind anthology. Of thing. Yeah. And it's basically just about the West. And what they Coen Brothers do that is so great is their dialogue is just so real that you'll be listening to a dialogue and it's like five minutes long. And you'll be like, did I just listen to a five minute conversation between people about nothing? And you love it. And you're like, that was great. Six episodes. I think out of the six of them or like six parts in this movie, it's like two hours and ten minutes. Each one's about summer 15, summer 30. The ones that reach 30 minutes are classics. Like, there is some good stuff. And it's basically just about the West. But, like, a funny kind of comedy thing about it, but at the same time kind of real, of how shitty the West really was. You have trails. You have gold diggers. You have bank robberies. Uh, outlaws. You have, you know, Hearst. Like, there's a lot of separate stories just about the West. I mean, one, the West sucks. Two, the Coen brothers. I'd say this is their third best movie. And really fast for all you. Fargo and and No Country for All Men. And for any of you guys who are wondering, the Coen brothers had uh, some awesome, some 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 great classics. Legendary movies. So uh, I'll go a little easy first. Uh, Raising Arizona. Great movie. Um, They also have Spies Like Us. Funny Dan Aykroyd and a Chevy Chase movie. Um, But let's get to the heavy hitters, uh, shall we? Old Brother Were Art Thou. Good. George Clooney. True Grit. Good. Hail Caesar. Not that good, Uh, but yeah. 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 why they went to Netflix. Burn basically. After Reading. Good. Fargo. Great. The Big Lebowski. Great. No Country for Old Men. Oh, I forgot The Big Lebowski. I still say this is their third best because it is very good. But they create the dude. I know they created the dude, and I love The Big Lebowski, but this movie's fantastic. Like, it's getting great reviews. Yeah. And this, it, this kind of turned into Netflix Oscar front runner right now. Which is crazy. Which is crazy because yeah. it was a big year, like, yeah. for July 22 and Roma's yeah. coming out. So, yeah. for them to be so. It's Roma, but we'll see. Yeah. What? I still think Roma. No, Roma's, yeah, it's going to be Roma. Yeah. But this movie's going to get a lot of love, and I think that's yeah. really cool because the Corn Brothers, because of Hail Caesar, we kind of, that's why they're on Netflix. Because Hail Caesar made no money. So, we got Solo. Yeah, and then I'm like, okay, you know what? I remember why the Coen brothers are great because they may have some not hitters that aren't great. Like, I didn't love Burn After Reading. I know it's good, though. All their movies are done. Like, they put a lot of heart into all their movies. Yeah. Like, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Shane Black's kind of getting into a stage where I'm like, I don't know, dude. You're putting a lot of crap out there. They're they're so, like, passionate, and I appreciate that, you know what, guys? I knew what you went for, Hell Caesar. It was bad. Yeah. But I get what you made. You took the gamble. And what's funny is, like, when every time they do a bad one, you know they're going to come up with a great one. Yeah. Because they're like, we're going to take what was good about yeah, that. Backwards. Let's add it here, and then we're going to do it. I mean, but it's so crazy. Like, they've, they've discovered stars, too. It's like, Javier Bardem has always been a working actor, but, like, he became he's an Oscar. He's he an became Oscar winning actor. He's a critical actor. And we got our Han Solo. Like, they've. They yeah, found and he did a talent. great job of Han yeah. Solo. He so, wasn't the problem with the movie. It was yeah. marketing. So very excited. So two must-watches on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, check them out. Netflix is a can't-miss, man. Netflix is great. Avengers coming out in December. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm super excited. I see. That's Thousand why Thousand I feel like we're going to get the announcement in December, Mike, to get a recipe for Netflix. No, because if it's... It's to- not tomorrow, Mike. It's tomorrow. It's, 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 not tomorrow, it's November 29th. You can stay up all night. It's not happening. Yeah, well, we'll see. But you guys will definitely know, just like us, whether or not that trailer drops. But... 
think that's pretty much it, good brother. Uh, did we miss anything when it comes to anything else? No, good Thanksgiving. Bears are great. Bears are pretty good. good. Stuff, you can, we talked about it My over on Sports Teams couch. are great. You won't let me run yours. That's why they suck. I yeah, mean, well, it's hard. well, everybody who listens to the sports channel knows exactly about that. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, Alex. God, you're close. so excuse though. Yeah, well, your teams are always bad. Yeah, Leonard Fournette and Melvin Gordon. There's always a reason, Mike. Cam Newton, There's Delaney Walker. There's always a reason why you why, suck. How did that team suck? My I teams don't get are great because I draft better. No. The team that you guys all just saw me draft here on the network is actually doing pretty good. We uh, were the points leaders, so we'll see yeah, buddy. how that goes. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the opera like, to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash MikeMercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwindtipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Uh, that'll do it for us, good brother. You want to want to close up shop? Nah, we can sell it in the sunset. Yo, Adrian, yeah. I made a bad movie recently, but it's okay. You're such a hater. I made a paycheck. Let us know. What I got you... a grandson. He looks like you. Oh, don't spoil that. How? Okay, spoiler really fast for uh, uh, Creed two, three, two, one. I love that they brought back uh, the real uh, son actor yeah, from Baboa. Yeah, yeah. From, uh, yeah, especially since he's so hot from uh, This Is Us. Yeah, and yeah. I did see it, Milo. Yeah, yeah, my and like, I looked yeah, and I yeah. was like. I was like, wait a minute. That kid does look like Adrian yeah, a little bit. Where would so I picture? Good. Okay. Like, Damn, that's kind of weird. If that we, didn't... we didn't get enough Pauly in this movie. Oh. I didn't get enough references to him. Yeah. I saw the bottle of alcohol. Yeah. It was a bad movie, though, guys. Don't uh, watch you're it. such a hater. Catch all of us all over the good network here on the Mercado Airwaves Network. We're on Twitter. He's at Mercado21. Alex, I'm at mmercado2333. You can even follow him. Go at typing when tipsy. And the show has a freaking twitter now alex oh yeah yeah it's good nudie's coming in brothers pod every uh first letter in the word is capitalized just look it up you'll find us and we're all Ooh, on now Insta- we're all on instagram you can follow nicole at typing one tipsy he's at mercado two one two one i'm at mike mercado two three 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 likes on facebook at mercado airwaves run youtube youtube.com slash mike mercado two three 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 Download us, like, rate, review, and share us anywhere you get your favorite podcasts at Mercado Airwaves. Go to Patreon, patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. There you can see Alex's sex tapes and our interviews ad-free and before anybody else with athletes and celebrities. Just check us out at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Huge shout-out to Munch Art Design for powering us here at the network. Come play video games with me at Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. I mean, that's pretty much it. Alex, we plugged everything we can. Uh, you enjoy the rest of your week. We will talk definitely if the Avengers trailer uh, drops. Otherwise, don't get in any trouble. And if you do, don't call me because I'm poor. Yeah, um, fun thing. Cowboy Bebop is going to Netflix, the live action. The, the anime. Really? Yeah, just an hour ago announced. Oh, they wow. Got Netflix stacking up with that Disney Disney Plus coming up, man. Well, here's the thing, too, is we just saw that Castlevania dropped, which I thought was a really good season this past Halloween. But the, the people are doing Cas- – uh, and The Witcher will be dropping. But the people who just did Castlevania – are in talks to do the Legend of Zelda. Yeah. So that would be very Netflix interesting. Netflix is stacking up some, some products, man. Which is interesting because I, I thought Nintendo would want to go with a a company like Disney that would that that's very much product 
that they very much cares yeah. about quality. But the fact that they're going to go with Illumination and then they're going to start working with Netflix is very interesting that they I will think put they their products the there. there. I think Disney is like, we want to be the face. We're not going to be the and face. And they control everything. It's like the WWE yeah. is like, they want their brand to be part of like, it. And I Disney's get it. Disney's great, but you yeah. have Star Wars, you have yeah. superheroes, you have yeah. this. We're like, we want to be the face. Like, we can start yeah. something here. We can do our own. I mean, they broke around at a theme park in California's yeah. Universal. Yeah, and then we'll see what happens with Pokemon. Because if Pokemon ends up working out Which as much as we it think will. it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be. The Mario animated movie is on its way. And that's a Warner Brothers movie. Yeah. So if Warner Brothers finds a hit in a Pokemon series, it opens the door up to anything. Imagine so that Mario from Illumination's good. We've already been here for an hour, and we still yeah. find something to talk about. All right, Great guys. News, yeah. We love you. We'll see you in the next episode of The Good Brothers here on the Mercado Airways Network. For The Good Brother himself, Alex Mercado. Hey. I'm Mike Mercado. See you guys later. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwindtipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Thanks for joining us here on The Good Brothers, here on Mercado Airwaves. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the opera I could go out there and uh, test my skill. 
to award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support.